What are some of the best practices that you need to follow to get better results from your email sequences in HubSpot? In this video, I'm gonna take a part of a larger webinar we did on this very topic and share with you some very tactical things to put in mind when you're running those email sequences. In addition, at the end of the video, we'll actually share a best practices checklist that you can use every time you run email sequences. So best practices, how to think about moving into a sequence. It's always going to start with strategy and segmentation. So I actually have at the end of this webinar, I have steps that I want you to walk through when you put your sequence together. And the first thing shocker is strategy. The second one is going to be set up in content because you can't really set up what you need to set up without thinking about step one. And you definitely can't set up things if you don't have content to talk about. I'll tell you one of the common challenges that both Alexis and myself and other consultants on our team face is, hey, we want you to put it put together a sequence, Alexis, and we want you to do it to this segment of people and we want them to book a meeting. And the next question she says is, great, what do you want to say in those? And the question is, what should we say in those? And she's like, I don't know, what content do you have? Oh, and it stops right there. So you have to think about what content you have to bring them to the point where they want to actually converse with you. And then obviously step three is tracking and adjusting. Your success of sequences is going to vary based on job role. Who is using the sequences? Are these BDRs? Are these sales pros? Are these account managers? Um, what type of people are they reaching out to? And what does their buy-in journey look like? So if your industry largely based their buying decision on referrals and social proof, cold outreach is going to be difficult for you to command something there. So you might need to switch to inviting people to an upcoming event with your cold outreach versus asking for a meeting. And that also dovetails into the actions asked of a contact. So again, we're all, all three of these things, like these are really good things to bring to your team when you're talking about using sequences in any way or shape or form and have people think critically through these because this is going to vary wildly based on the industry you're in and what you're asking your audience to do. So let's talk about the best practices for effective sequences. There's several here and we've got some additional color under each. So number one, you don't, this isn't a surprise. We talk about this all the time. Have a goal. You definitely have to have a goal. Each of the email sequences needs to have a clear goal. We'll talk about a variety of goals and ideas and use cases you can choose from, but it also helps you guide the content and what your cadence should be. So if you are educating an audience, for example, and you're dripping out 10 um, articles or pieces of content, you're not going to drip them out over 10 days. We barely get a chance to go through our own email every day and clean it out, let alone get new stuff in there. So that might be once a week for 10 weeks. So again, that's going to have uh, implications on your goal. Second of all, having it, having it be personalized and relevant. And I don't mean, hi, Alexis, we're both women. Let's talk. Okay. That, that's not personalized, but tailored to the interest and needs of your recipient. Segmentation is critical. This is where we see the most opportunity for improvement, quite frankly, is better segmentation, better content. Like those two things solve a lot of problems. And this doesn't just mean, again, like just because Alexis and I are both women does not mean we have the same shared interests, maybe about how we want to build our careers or what we enjoy in our spare time. So the more you know about your contacts, which again, just goes back to your whole tech stack, the better you are. Um, I already said this, these are not personalized. These are just pre-fills. And then think of the big three. This is where your content comes from and segmentation. Does your content solve a problem, answer a question or head on a pain point? Even for us, like I, I challenge our team sometimes like a pain point's like, yeah, HubSpot's messy, but the pain point is actually, I had a call the other day that was, that was perfect. HubSpot's a mess, which means they can't get the reports and the board is breathing down their neck to be able to share that information publicly. Okay, now we've got a pain point that we're solving. Do you struggle to get reports together quickly so that you look good in front of the board? Okay, that's a pain point, right? So think about that as you put together your sequences. All right, mobile first. We are now should not have to say this again, but mobile first, mobile first. I love sending myself my own emails and seeing how many scrolls does it take and how quickly can I see what the email is about. We're now also moving to an environment. We're not there yet, but Apple is releasing AI summaries at the top of emails. You guys, this is going to change the game for email, period. I don't know exactly how that's going to change for Hub, HubSpot email sequences, but I imagine we're going to have to keep our eyes and ears open of that. 70% of our emails are read on mobile. Again, what's short on desktop? I've been shocked at myself when I sent an email and I was like, wow, that looks short. It was actually really long on uh, mobile. We'll dig into this later. Have a clear call to action. And it's not always booking a meeting. So if you want, this is where I really like to dig into the use of AI. Like what are some ways I could ask for action here that are not booking a meeting? So some things we've used in the past, explore the guide, watch the video, 
ask them a question. Like you probably got one this week about this webinar. You know, what do you want to learn? Uh, invite them to search something, find us on YouTube, email, stop by the booth again, so on and so forth. And then these are really good things to A-B test. I ran a sequence this last week where I put like the subject line was the same, the intro was the same, but there was two calls to action instead of one. And so does that mean that there's a call to action above the content? How does that play out? So you can put that to the test as well. Um, good testing practices. This, <laughs> this also is really important because when I hear our sequences aren't working and I'll ask, great, how are you testing them? What do you mean? Or we'll go into a testing environment and any good test has one control and one variable. So thankfully HubSpot AB uh, testing inside of sequences now makes that possible, but then naming your sequences and naming your templates becomes a big deal. So if you haven't yet really dug into AB testing, I'm also shocked at the number of times I say AB testing and someone says they're doing it and I dig into it and they're not really doing it well. Um, go study actually how it works. What does it mean? How do you do it effectively? It's always a work in progress. As a person running the sequences or reporting this to your management or your let's superiors or anything, always communicate what you're learning and what you're testing. Because I think one of the challenges I've seen in, in both my career, in our team, as well as our clients is executive leaders, especially those that are not in the doing. So we need to start talking about, again, doing, testing, sharing, and repeat. And that's actually fundamental to all marketing, but that's my perspective. So if you want to screenshot that, this is your best practices checklist for setting up sequences. We'll talk about deliverability here in a minute, but this is our checklist. So one, do I have a well-defined goal for sequences? Is it personalized and relevant? Does this solve a problem, answer a question, or hit on pain points? Is it written with a mobile-first mindset? Is there a clear call to action? Am I following good testing practices? And am I documenting what we're doing and what we're learning?